Worried about those eye drops that cause people to die and go blind? Well, I'm going to explain what you need to look out for and how you can avoid those drops and ones that might even be like them. Keep watching. I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, and a little bit about eye makeup health. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit the like, follow, and subscribe button so you can get these videos as soon as I make them. If you found this video, it's likely because you saw the news and there is a type of artificial tear that has caused people to go blind, lose an eye, and even die from a bacterial infection brought on by the eye drop. So how do you know if you need to be worried about the eye drop that's sitting in your bag or in your medicine cabinet? I'm going to explain it all right now. So what happened is there's a company called Ezra Care and they manufacture artificial teardrops in India. And that plant in India has been linked to an outbreak in 16 states in the United States. It's affected 68 patients. Eight of them have gone blind, four lost an eye, and unfortunately, three have died. So this is absolutely tragic and horrific. How did this happen? Well, what happened is they are manufacturing artificial tears. And in this country, we have the FDA, right? The Food and Drug Administration. They oversee a lot of different medicines. They make sure manufacturing plants are all up to standard, right? Well, not really. Not for anything that's considered over the counter. So something you don't need a prescription for does not go through the same rigors as something you need a prescription for. And that's exactly what happened here. So the FDA doesn't require these inspections for over the counter eye drops because it didn't require a prescription. These eye drops, this Ezra Care eye drop brand of artificial tears is actually sold on Amazon and in Walmart. So it's really scary to know how many tens of thousands are in the hands of Americans or even worldwide. Why? And this is exactly what happened. When you have an eye drop that's preservative free, and that's what this eye drop was. This artificial tear was preservative free. Ophthalmologists and optometrists, all eye doctors, we like preservative free eye drops because sometimes the preservatives in the eye drops can cause a lot of problems for patients. They can cause more irritation. They can cause toxicity to the front surface of your eye. And if you're taking a lot of eye drops, whether artificial tears or glaucoma drops or dry eye drops, then all that preservative can build up. If you wear contact lenses, you can't use eye drops with preservatives because they're going to cause protein buildup on the contact lenses themselves. So a lot of times we do recommend preservative free drops. But typically, if you go to your eye doctor's office, we'll give you a little sample. This is not sponsored by this company at all. This is Sustain. Sustain has been around for a long time. They're a manufacturer and they make artificial teardrops. They make specifically, in this case, a preservative-free artificial teardrop. But what do you notice about these drops? If you haven't seen these before, these are called single-use vials. There are a couple different types of eye drops that come in these single-use vials like this. And the reason they are single-use is because they don't have have preservative. A preservative increases the shelf life of an eye drop and makes it more resistant to bacteria. So in this case, they were manufacturing in India preservative-free artificial teardrops. In and of itself, not a problem. But what they were not doing is putting them in single-use vials like this. A single-use vial, you are supposed to open it, put a drop in each eye, if that's what your doctor says, and then throw it away in the trash. You are not supposed to cap it and reuse it. And the reason is it doesn't have preservatives. So if you cap it and reuse it, there's a chance that you can have bacteria in this solution. Unfortunately for people, what that company was doing was not putting the eye drops in single use files. They were just putting it in a regular old bottle. Now you may be on a preservative free eye drop and it seems like it's in a big bottle. Some of them have valves. Well, any of them that should be preservative free have a special one-way valve in that bigger bottle. So that prevents bacteria from going up and festering and multiplying and doing all the bad stuff in the solution of the tears. If you have a specific valve there, not a problem. That's not what they had in Ezra Air. They just took a regular bottle with no valve and put artificial tears in there with no preservative. So this was unfortunately the perfect setup 
for creating bacteria. Now, the really terrible part is that the bacteria that's been linked to this artificial tears is something called Pseudomonas arginosa. It is a terrible bacteria. We see loads of corneal infection and eye infections from this, and it's very dangerous and very scary, and it's resistant to a lot of different antibiotics, and that is what they found. In addition, they found that it might even be transmitted from person to person that didn't even use the eye drops. That's how sticky this bacteria is. It just sticks to everything. Water faucets, sinks, moist environments. It's what makes it so hard to eradicate. So of course, once people started feeling sick and getting sick from it. They traced it back to this eye drop. They did a product recall. Well, now we are left trying to manage these infections. And from ophthalmologists, a lot of them have been managing it specifically down in Florida at one of the most prestigious ophthalmology eye hospitals called Baskin Palmer. And they put together treatment strategies to help people that have developed these pseudomonas infections from the artificial tears. Now, most of the people that came in, they had redness, itching, tearing. This is why it's really, really important to always tell your doctor every single thing you're on. Just because you buy it without a prescription doesn't mean it's not important to list to us. So unfortunately, some of the people just didn't even know that they needed to mention that they had just bought an artificial teardrop from whatever store they had bought it from because they just assumed it was safe. So there have been a series of case reports. It's currently going to be published in the literature where there are all these ophthalmologists treating this particular bacterial infection. And they've noticed a corneal infiltrate, which is the bacteria infection on the front surface of the eye, looks like a white spot, and even a hypopium, which is just all that white right there is just bacteria and inflammation and infection, and that's called a hypopion. As of now, they're treating it with antibiotics, but it's challenging. They have to keep changing the types of antibiotics that they treat with because it is so resistant to so many different kinds of antibiotics. And then what they've also been pioneering over there is a type of Rose Bengal photodynamic therapy. This antimicrobial therapy works by utilizing a green light and that activates the rose bengal dye. And then that generates a reactive oxygen species which targets the bacteria. This is very toxic in general to any kind of infectious organism. Infectious organisms don't like oxygen. That's also why I said with contact lenses, we want to do everything we can to improve the amount of oxygen to the front surface of the eye in general because bacteria, viruses, they don't like oxygen. They don't survive in high oxygen rich environments. So that's the premise for this experimental treatment that they're doing down in Florida. Now, most of the ophthalmologists think that the individuals who unfortunately passed because of this disease, that likely it did not start within the eye. It's really rare to get systemic infection from an eye infection. And this group of ophthalmologists that have studied kind of the most number of patients have not seen any systemic findings from the eye infection. That's not to say that it can't happen, but they haven't seen it yet. Likely these were people that were already sick or in the ICU who unfortunately this kind of very serious infection can have very devastating consequences. So what do you do? Anytime you have some new eye symptoms, redness, itching, change in vision, pain, you've got to let your eye doctor know and you have to let us know know if you are on any new eye drops or any new medicines, even if you can buy them without a prescription, even if they're over the counter. When you come in for your appointment, bring in the bottles with you. Bring in whatever bottle that you are currently taking. Bring in your contact lens cases. If you wear contact lenses, bring in your solution. Bring all of it in because a lot of times what we'll do is culture. We'll take a little cotton swab. We'll take swabs of the inside of a contact lens case or even of the actual artificial tear solution or the bottle top. Those are all really important. So bring everything with you because that's important. A lot of times we can look and say, hey, this is nothing. It's not a big deal. This is just a regular viral conjunctivitis or pink eye, but it always helps to be better prepared. And then always know where you're putting your drops in your bottles. I see a lot of people that come in with their bag and they've got things all loose in their purse or in their little fanny pack. Remember, these are things that are going in your eye and though a small percentage is systemically absorbed, which means not a lot, some of it does 
cells get into your body. So you just want to lower the risk of infection. Keep things as clean as possible. If you need to put it in a little Ziploc bag, that's going to keep things clean. In this case, it wouldn't have made any difference because the design flaw was in the bottle itself. The manufacturing plant was not considered sterile and clean. A lot of things that happened that unfortunately were the perfect setup for creating this antibiotic resistant bacteria. But for the most part, if you are mindful of where you buy your teardrops or anything that you put in the eye, I would stay away from buying things online for that purpose. You know where things are manufactured. I'm going to put a list of some of the other brand names that Ezra Care goes under. If you have artificial tears or any drops that are listed as these names, you want to go ahead and toss them out right away. Just don't want to take a chance. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions or comments below, any concerns, you have topics you want me to address, drop them all below. I read each and every single one. And thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.